So in this video, we're going to start looking at tracking performance. So what's your best streak? How many consecutive correct notes did you get in a row? Things like that. And in addition to um, tracking that, we then are going to have some kind of visual uh, feedback to let you know that you're doing good. So in this case, we're going to have a um, particle system made of sparkles and the sparkles will activate when you do well and then when you do better uh, then even uh, fireworks will appear in the background so you're getting all this kind of visual stimuli letting you know that you're doing good another version of that would be to say maybe have animated people the audience and that um, as you do better you know maybe they start becoming more active and things like that so let's first make the particle system so this is simply an image that I imported to just drag and drop from an external folder. I simply drew it in Anime Studio Pro. So rather than using the default particle, which I'll get into in a moment, we're going to use this so it actually looks like a star. It needs to be a texture type sprite 2D and UI. And I think that's the only change I've made to it because when you're in the 3D environment, it will default to... I believe a texture so you just need to choose sprite 2d in UI second let's go ahead and make actually let's turn this into a material because right now this is just an image we need to actually make a material so right click create material click on albedo click on the sparkle and now we're going to change the shader to sprite diffuse so now we actually have a material and let's call this sparkle mat so let's go up to game object particle system now in this case we want to keep the default cone in some of the other ones I've changed the shape to boxes or um, other things so in this case we want to keep the uh, cone so what we're going to do is first we want to get rid of this default particle so we take the sparkle mat just drag and drop and it overwrites it suddenly rather than having that plain old circle you now have a sparkle for our purposes way too big so let's go to start size and make this like 0.2 and again this is going to be uh, completely arbitrary what you feel looks right to you Next, let's reduce lifetime down to 3. Let's increase max particle up to 2500. And as I've said before, this isn't meant to be a tutorial for particle systems, so I'm not going in depth into what each and every one of these do. Um, so let's bump this up. And again, like I said, this is kind of like sculpting. You have to decide what looks right to you, and um, just little by little, uh, tweak it until you get the effect that you want. It's probably a bit excessive. So let's do 360. Now, something that we haven't done in the other particle systems recently is rotation over lifetime. Rather than just having these come out, you can actually have them rotate. Now, I haven't done that before because the other ones use the default particle, which is a circle. A circle rotating isn't really noticeable because it's circular. So if you do this, let's make it like 370. It's subtle, but they are indeed rotating now. So now let's add something else we haven't done in the other videos recently, and that's gravity modifier. That is, over time, gravity will pull these particles down. So depending on how much you apply depends how quickly it gets pulled down. In this case, it's going to create like a fountain effect. So if you're looking to create like a water fountain, you could do this as well. And there you go, see gravity's pulling it down, and now you can really see the fact that they are circular, uh, excuse me, that they are uh, rotating. So let's now go to shape, and we're just going to pull this in so it's not quite so wide, and we're also going to shrink the base as well. probably a little bit now that we've done that since there's less uh, volume 
now it looks a little bit too crowded so now we can change this back down to like say 275 and maybe this size is a little bit too big as well let's do like 0.15 okay so now at a certain point you have to actually uh, start watching it uh, in the game itself to see if it actually looks right so we have so this needs to go over because this is pretty much centered at zero and we need to lower this all right see how that looks okay so it still needs to be lowered more push it over more I think that's a little bit obtrusive though, so let's shrink the bottom a little bit. Shrink the top a little bit. I think that should do it. So now we'll call this Sparkle Fountain. Take that, turn it to a prefab, delete. So now you have that sparkle fountain that you can uh, instantiate at will. So why would we want to do this? Well, we would want to do this, as I mentioned, to be like a, a feedback as a reward to the player saying, okay, you're doing really great. Just like at concerts, there's fireworks and sparkles and things like that. So now we need to start tracking success. So what we'll do is in the GM script, we'll create a new static variable. The static variables are variables that are accessible throughout the entire application. So public static, and we'll call this, uh, call it win streak. It'll start as zero. Oops. Public static int. Not using any fractions. So win streak. That's going to be how many consecutive you get right. So now, when would we do that? Well, we have to do th two things. One, when you collide with the note, this number would be increased. Two, if a note gets missed, um, it would. Uh, stop increasing and would be reset to zero and another is if you play a string and there's no note there at all uh, that would also be a fail so a couple types of fails one technically speaking is when the note hits the fail collider the other is when you hit a key that doesn't need to be hit so let's first just start tracking the right ones so here we go so if other dot game object dot name equals success then what we want to do is that is where we want to track the correct one so we already have this carved out this code carved out to track successes so now we just have to drop this new variable in there so gm dot win streak plus equals one so whatever win streak is equal to increase it by one now this is just going to track right ones. This isn't going to track wrong ones because I want to do this incrementally. I want to do this as an iterative process. So now what we're going to do is we go back to GM. Oops, did I save that? I did not. So a new variable. Public transform, capital T, and we'll call this fountain FW for fireworks. So we save that. And we go to the guitar, which is the GM object. And there's that new fountain fireworks. So we take our Sparkle fountain fireworks and put it there. So now the guitar object is aware of the fountain fireworks. So now it can do things such as instantiate it. So in the update section, 
we're simply going to check to see if that uh, if you've hit a certain number so if oops sorry so if and we don't have to preface the globe uh, excuse me the static variable GM because we're in the GM script so if win streak equals 10 sorry double equal sign so if win streak equals yeah let's just do 5 because I'm probably gonna make a lot of mistakes so for now we'll just do 5 so if win streak is equal to 5 then instantiate that new object so fountain fountain fireworks so what is being instantiated where it's being instantiated and the fireworks we said is going to be instantiated at those horrible numbers but that's okay it's not a calculation so it's easy enough to copy so negative 3.73 and it's not exact if you wanted to like nudge it over and make it like negative 4 by negative 0.5 it's not the end of the world so what's being instantiated where it's being instantiated and the rotation You want the fountain's own rotation. Now the problem with this is this gets run with every single frame. So that means as long as this is this, this is going to be instantiated over and over again. Now the game moves pretty quickly, so you're going to win streak is either going to drop back down to zero or go up to six, seven, eight pretty quickly. But there are still multiple frames, which means you only want this to happen once. So you have to create another variable. So, public string uh, fountain spawn, and we'll start as no. So it has not been spawned. It has not been uh, instantiated. Now we'll just modify this so it checks for that as well. So if one streak is equal to five and fountain spawn, and fountain spawn equals n so it has not been spawned yet and now in here is where you change it to yes so by default fountain has not been spawned so when this reaches 5 this should still be at spawn no we change spawn to yes we instantiate and it only gets instantiated once because this is now no longer true. I think that should do it. Oops, got an error. Oh, I missed an equal sign. I always, always do that. So whenever we get one right, now it won't minus the wrong ones out. So, like I said, this isn't yet really what we're looking for. There we go. So when I got five right, the fireworks comes out. And then what you could do is when you get ten right, you could say have a second fireworks come out. So how would we do that? win streak equals 10 but we can't use the same fountain spawn so we'd use another one so public string so if I would thought this out a little bit better I would have used slightly different naming so let's 
backtrack. This will be fountain spawn L, and this will be fountain spawn R. Just make sure that when you make a change like that, you go back to wherever that's being used. And I believe that's all was needed to do because we're, it, we didn't reinvent the wheel. We just really recycled an idea that we already had. So make sure you've changed all the fountain spawn variables. So fountain spawn L, L, R, R. Uh, if win streak equals 10, that equals no. That equals no. Oh, I know what I did wrong. I didn't move this over. So, just have to move this over horizontally. So, uh, maybe six? So, one, six. There we go. So if I go back and watch the video, it probably was evident that the second one spawned on top of this. Uh, now that's too far over, so this is just a matter of tweaking. So let's move this over to 5. I expect it to be symmetric since it's centered, so I'd expect it to be right around 3, actually, since this is negative 3. That's one of the nice things about centering everything um, at the zero point is if it's symmetrical, it makes it easy to figure out uh, where everything should be. Okay. I think that should about do it.